The PCI Express version does matter for a GPU, but only under certain conditions. If you just take a decent GPU, say a 5080, run it at maximum settings and simply compare how it performs on different PCI Expressors, then each newer version gives you about a 2% improvement. That's how it was this year when I tested PCI Express 5 with new Nvidia models, and that's how it was a couple years ago when the PCI Express 4 came out. There's almost no difference, because even the older versions already provided enough speed to handle GPU under normal conditions. But what if the conditions aren't normal? Specifically, when the GPU runs out of memory. Let's say I have a card with 8 GB, but I launch a game that needs 10. Those two extra gigs have to come from somewhere, and they are pulled from system RAM. It's easy to check this. On the left you see the game running on a GPU with enough memory. It really uses around 10 GB and the system memory consumption is reasonable. Plus, not many read requests there. On the right the situation is opposite. The GPU can't fit everything into its 8 GB, so it constantly sends data to RAM and read requests skyrocket. Why does this matter? Because that overflow data doesn't get transferred directly, it first go through PCI Express to the CPU and from there to the memory modules. And in that whole chain PCI Express is the slowest. Compared to the speeds modern GPUs operate at internally, it's an order of magnitude slower. To be honest, RAM isn't that fast either. So in this video I'll test how the speed of both PCI Express and RAM affects gaming performance when your GPU runs out of memory. For that I'll need a suitable motherboard, something like this MSI X270E HTI Wi-Fi. For now I mainly need it for its PCI Express 5 support, it's got that. I also need enough CPU overclocking potential, so that games don't become CPU limited and don't interfere with the results. That's no problem either, MSI put in a power delivery system so strong that I wouldn't hesitate to overclock a 16 core processor, not to mention an 8 core one. I have two GPUs, the RTX 5060 and the 5060 Ti 16GB. They are very similar cards, and this is gonna be the main subject. The second one I'll use just to ensure I'm doing everything correctly. Both support PCI Express 5, but they're limited to only 8 lanes, meaning half the bandwidth the slot could theoretically provide. They'll be tested in 6 different games that can be adjusted to use either more or less than 8GB of VRAM. Which is important for this experiment. Reference measurement. 16GB card behaves exactly as expected. Across PCI Express 5, 4 and 3 performance is basically the same. Sometimes FPS doesn't change at all and in the worst case it drops from 95 FPS to 91. There is no freezes or stutters, the game just consistently runs slightly slower. The only noticeable exception is PCI Express 2, where performance drops by about 10% compared to PCI Express 5. That's normal behavior and has been observed many times before, which leads to conclusion. When there's enough video memory, the PCI Express version barely matters. The RTX 5060 behaves exactly the same way. I run the same games with the same settings, but lower the texture quality. Textures define how sharp objects looked in game and have very little impact on FPS by themselves. As you can see, when there's enough video memory, FPS stays almost identical regardless of texture quality. What does change is how many gigabytes the game requires. The texture quality fluctuation is what allows me to test both enough and not enough memory scenarios on the same GPU. Only Kingdom Come Deliverance ruins the pattern, since changing texture quality there doesn't actually alter the textures themselves. Great. So I had to lower shadow and object's quality by one step instead. That introduces quite a deviation in measurements, keep it in mind. But the overall performance graph still looks nearly identical to the previous one, so I can make the same conclusion. When there's enough video memory, the PCI Express version barely matters. And when there's isn't enough memory, it's fun to start from the end. You can observe how the same graphics card with the same settings performs better and better with each step up in PCI Express version. And not just by a couple of percent like before, by a quarter, by even a third, PCI Express speed becomes very important here, and in some games it can almost bring the frame rate back to normal. For example in Forza, there's almost no difference between PCI Express 5 and the scenario where the GPU has enough memory. How good that I've tested a few games, because situation in The Last of Us is opposite. 
Here the biggest difference, up to 70%, appears between PCI Express 4 and 5. Same card, same settings, it's just that PCI Express helps to smooth out the problem better, because it can transfer overflow data from RAM much faster. Speaking of RAM, those unlabeled numbers you see are the power consumption of each memory module. For better visualization I'll show it like this. The higher the number, the more work they are doing. And you can see that even on PCI Express 4 the modules aren't working too hard, averaging around 1 in a half watts each. PCI Express 5 handles things better, but that also means the modules are working harder, now drawing around 2 in a half watts each. Probably my favorite data come from Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, because it shows the real essence of what's happening. My test lasts 6 minutes and you can see that FPS drop starts at the same moment in all cases. After that every version except PCI Express 5 quickly falls to its own level and stays there until the end of the test. The PCI Express 5 behaves differently. First FPS drops to around 25 to 30 and holds there for a couple of minutes, then over time gradually falls further to 17, 20 FPS. In other words the slot absorbs the problem better. That's exactly the right word, absorbs, because realistically the 5060 could run the game with almost the same settings about 3 times faster, if only everything fit into its 8GB of VRAM. That's easy to achieve by adjusting a couple of sliders, lower shadows by one step and reduce character detail. Voila, 80 frames per second. In Stalker PCI Express also helps smooth out the performance drop. The test also ran for 6 minutes and the stutter also appeared in the same exact spot. With each newer PCI Express version the slowdown becomes noticeably smaller. Cyberpunk behaves more steadily. Even when it exceeds the VRAM limit by a full gigabyte, the game handles it surprisingly well. Right now it needs around 9 gigabytes, but there's only 8 available. Compared to the baseline test, both modern PCI Express versions just feel a bit more jittery, nothing major. You have to go back to the older PCI Express generations before the average FPS actually starts to drop. The key thing in Cyberpunk is not to push the settings any higher or the game will just tank completely. Finally, Expedition become more and more stable with each newer PCI Express version. The 1% lows gradually improved, while the average FPS stayed roughly the same. Ok, so now it's clear. PCI Express version is something owners of GPUs with smaller amounts of memory should actually care about. Right now that means all models with 8GB or less. If you use the highest PCI Express version your system supports, your game will suffer less once the GPU runs out of memory. But there's two problems. First, in recent generations, both AMD and Nvidia have started cutting PCI Express lanes on their cheaper cards, sometimes down to 8 or even 4 lanes, just to reduce manufacturing costs. This limits slots bandwidth by 2 or even 4 times, effectively throwing you back by generation or 2. For you, that means as soon as you hit that VRAM limit, the performance drop will be much worse than it could have been otherwise. Second, the price. When a new PCI Express version comes out, motherboards supporting it are stupid expensive. Nobody's gonna spend 3, 400 dollars on the motherboard just to install a 250 dollar GPU. It usually takes a year or two before reasonably priced boards appear on the market, like it was recently with AMD B580. Which means if entry level GPUs launch during that period, their owners won't even get the real chance to experience their full potential. Their already limited full potential. Meanwhile, you know who does get the chance? Owners of high-end GPUs. Cards like 5080, 5090 comes with a full set of PCI Express lanes, and their owners are by far most likely to install them on the latest generation PCI Express motherboards. So we end up in the situation where those who don't need the PCI Express bandwidth have plenty of it. And those who would actually benefit from it in the near future almost never get it. Now it's interesting to see how much memory speed actually matters. Cause that's where all the overflow data goes. I'll keep PCI Express 5 and test 3 configurations. Single channel at 3600, dual channel at 6000 and dual channel at 6400 MHz, all at a 1 to 1 ratio. For a Ryzen system that's quite good and the high end motherboard definitely played a part here. Yes, when VRAM runs out memory speed does matter. 
I can't decide what's more surprising, that an extra 400 MHz gave such a boost, or that the terrible setup dropped by so little, because really, single channel DDR5 at 3600 is dreadfully slow. Maybe part of the explanation lies here. Forza rarely accesses system memory. With higher frequencies there's a bit more data throughput, but only by a few gigabytes per second. Forza turned out to be the only game where RAM speed made more difference than the jump from PCI Express 4 to PCI Express 5. Because The Last of Us clears things up quickly. RAM speed still had a noticeable impact, extra frequency turns into extra frames. Yet, compared to PCI Express, its influence feels secondary. Kingdom Come Deliverance behaves the same way. Let me quickly show the data again, so you can see how that extra 400 MHz gave around a 10% boost, but using the wrong PCI Express version still had a bigger effect. It's all quite clear. What I really liked is how it looks in the moment. At the start all configurations require about 9 GB per second from RAM, since not all textures have loaded yet. Just walking a few meters into the world, configurations with limited VRAM starts to struggle. FPS drops and memory requirements spike. You can clearly see that higher memory frequency improves throughput. First to 16 GB per second, then to 20 after a bit more movement. Let's hide the extra clutter. While the new world elements load in, you can see an FPS drop. Now watch it fall from 40 to 25. At that moment memory requirements surge sharply. It stays like that for a few seconds until the system catches up. Then FPS returns and memory usage drops again. This will happen every time the system stumbles. By the end of the test, after 6 minutes of running around the village, it can no longer keep up with the VRAM overload, and memory requirements sometimes spike up to 26 GB per second. Meanwhile, the control run with enough VRAM stays flat as it was at the start, 9 GB per second. Just to be thorough, here are the extra graphs. Memory speed only mattered during VRAM overload. In normal conditions the CPU handled everything fine, even in single channel mode. So the conclusion is simple. Under normal conditions PCI Express has almost no effect on GPU's performance. But once it runs out of memory, PCI Express and RAM start to matter a lot. Thank you for your support, likes and subscribes, it matter a lot too. My name is Roman, see you in the next video.